histology. When you have 35 slides to do, well, I like to use the analogy, if someone gave me eight hours to chop down a tree, spend six hours sharpening that knife, and two hours to actually cut down the tree. Be organized and be able to be focused on things. I kind of put together in those handouts I gave you how at least I organize it. And I would say that most teachers teach in histology organize it in that similar manner. But this is the one I've been uh, using and I get good feedback with it, okay? Um, don't be afraid of things. Uh, looking retrospectively, students uh, usually say histology is not too bad because it makes sense. If there's a lot of layers there, then you would expect it to protect things. If there's only one layer there, it's not gonna protect. So just don't fight it. Just understand why they might be in that way. Again, physiology reflects anatomy. And keep that theme running into your head for the rest of your life if you're gonna stay in the field, okay? Okay, um, so what I plan on doing is, as much as I could over here, uh, do epithelial, then we go connective, and to where we are at that point, okay? Connective tissue tends to be the monster for, for a lot of students. But I'm going to show you it is very organized, despite what people think. But we're going to get into that, okay? And believe it or not, I'll even get into some clinical stuff, how you could actually utilize this stuff for later. You're going to need to know this definitely for A and P too, okay? It's just right now is your first time seeing everything, so it's going to be a blur because there's so much there. But when you get to A and P too, then we're going to look at it organs and then they'll talk about the different tissues there okay so this is your first um experience with histology um at least with a &P. okay and there's a lot of pictures in this histology uh, powerpoint i wouldn't encourage you to print it all out there's too much and you probably want if you're going to print it out you probably want to do it in color so it'll cost you an arm and a leg well not that much six dollars but Still, I mean, it's a lot you're bringing, though. Okay, and that's that's actually black and white. Yeah, I took a lot of pictures from your microscope size. Uh, took me about 46 hours to take all these pictures, and it's going to be like a virtual microscope. Something similar I showed you with the uh, mitosis. So there's a lot of pictures in there, and I'm going to point out features. When I took it, um, besides the microscope slides in, in histology, um, in the book it was all black and white. So they forced us to look at features, not by colors. And it actually was a little bit better, okay? It's trying to, if you could hit a ball, if I'm a righty, you put your right hand here and they, they staple it to your back, they kind of force you to hit a ball with your left hand and it soon gets better. And then when it comes out like this, you could do either or. All right, so let's go into histology, okay? So we go from atoms to molecules to cells to tissue. Remember, cells themselves, microscope-wise, you can only look at the cell membrane and the nucleus. There isn't much more you can actually see in there. You can't see the mitochondria. The organelles are just too small to see. But tissues, you definitely can. Putting tissues, different cells together, it will make sense. You can actually see this with a light microscope. Okay? So the chemical level, uh, images, you need special techniques to do this. Um, okay. All right, so chemical level, you need special techniques to see that stuff, atoms and molecules and stuff. The cellular level, you usually will need like an electron microscope to really see that, something that costs probably about a half a million dollars to get. Um, but you're not going to be able to see, uh, with our microscopes here, you wouldn't see that. We have something called a light microscope. And that's what we can actually see at, two, uh, with the, at the tissue level. This we can see very high magnification. This, up to 1,000. In fact, the way we have it, uh, the magnifications that we have, and you should know this, is that the, we can go up from 40x, 100x, 400x, or a thousand X. Those are really the four that we're going to be working with. So, if, and every time I'm going to show you the practical, if I show you things on the slides in this uh, presentation or on your practical exams, your lab quizzes, whatever, I'm going to tell you the magnification because the magnification is going to help you. Because we all know looking at something at a 40 X could look like something totally different at a thousand X. 
or it might look like something else at 1,000x. So this is going to actually help you to decide what you're actually looking at. This is the lowest magnification we'll go at, this is the highest. Usually we're looking at things between 100 and 400 in most of these slides. When we get to blood cells, we're looking at 1,000. All right, so that's what we're gonna be talking about with um, this, it's gonna be one of those, okay? Okay. So cells have different sizes and shapes. We kind of talked about it, but now we're going to get into details about it. They can be flat, and when they're flat, they're called squamous. They can be hexagonal over here. They could be cube shaped, and they're called cuboidal. They could be in long columns. They're called columna. The names kind of make sense. Spheroid. They become like balls. Okay. Discoid, I mean, to me, they look like smarty candy, but for some reason, they don't want to call them that. <laughs> all right. Stellate, that means star-like, all right? Fusiform means football shape, And we can have fibers or long ones, like skeletal muscles that we'll talk about, okay? So the shapes are going to help you to know what they're going to be called, okay? So tissues are cells that are working together. Histology is a study of tissues. There are four basic tissue types, and that's what's on your handout. All the tissue types that you have in your entire body are going to fall into one of those four. Epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue is going to make the linings of cavities, or they're going to make glands. Your skin is the lining of a cavity. The cavity is the outside world, so this is going to be epithelial. Okay? The lining of your stomach is going to be epithelium. Pituitary gland, pancreas, these glands are going to be epithelial in origin. Then you have connective tissue. Again, this is the monster of it all that students have like nightmares about. This one is literally going to connect things together. You'll find it underneath epithelium and where muscle is. So it's going to connect the muscle and epithelium, for instance. Then we have muscle tissue, and we have nervous tissue. All right, those are your four. Epithelia is not too bad to manage. Muscle, very easy. Nervous tissue, there's only one gonna be tissue that we're dealing with. Connective is where I'm gonna, you're gonna have a little bit of a nightmare, but I'm gonna try and make it conducive for you, okay? So when we look at this, we have atoms, Atoms go into molecules, go into cells. These cells will turn into tissues, and then we have four different tissue types. Epithelium, connective, muscle, or neural. Okay? Just so you can see, I wouldn't ask you this, but just so you can see it, when we're dealing with the amount of those tissues in our body, Muscle tissue is going to be most of your weight. So it's not a amount in your body, it's the weight. And we have 50% of our tissue is going to be muscle. Connective tissue is going to be another 45. Things like skin, believe it or not, bone is a part of that. Cartilage is a part of that. Blood is a part of that. And then we have epithelial tissue, which is a small amount. I'm sorry, not skin. Skin is not a part of this. Underneath the skin it is. But epithelial tissue, small amount, and nervous tissue, very, very small. I won't ask you about percentages, but at least you get an overview of what that is. Okay? Now, before we get into the tissues, we've got to talk about how are they put together. All right? How are they glued together? This is more, more or less for the epithelial tissues. Okay? So, all the cells are attached to something with the exception of two. Blood cells don't attach. They just are free flowing in the bloodstream. The other thing that's not attached to anything is metastatic cancer cells. Those are free flowing in the lymph or free floating in the bloodstream. They're not attached to anything. Other than that, the cells are all attached to something. There's three different cell junctions that we have. Tight junctions, desmosomes, 
and gap junctions. Tight junctions. Tight junctions are found in between adjacent cells. So here's one cell here, and another one's over here, and another one's over here. And the tight junctions are up here. This is the top of the cell. Down here is the bottom of the cell. Okay? Um, okay. What's happening here is that the tight junctions is not allowing anything to get in between the cells. They're tight. It's like if you take a shirt and you sew it, nothing could get through that seam. If you pull it apart, you're going to rip and tear that shirt. You pull that apart, it will tear. These are tight junctions. They're usually found towards the top of the cells. And they kind of look like this. And if you look at close-up, they kind of look like your hands. Like one cell will have one like this, another cell will have it like this. And they're kind of locked together. You can't pull them apart. Then we have desmosomes. Desmosomes are a little bit looser. They're more like snaps that are on your shirt. They're going to withstand some stress, but if the stress and the pressure is so great, it'll just pop open but the cells won't burst. They're gonna withstand some mechanical stress. Okay? And they're located also on the sides here. But we also have something down here. You see here is a full desmosome. We got half of it on from one side and half from the other, like this. Half on one side and half on the other. Down below, we only have one there because down below it's attached to a structure called a basement membrane. So there's only going to be half of one there. And what is that called? A hemidesmosome. All right? Don't let the names bite you. Just think about it, okay? So it's going to be anchoring the cell to this basement membrane, the structure that's just below it. The last one that we have is these communicating or gap junctions. And they connect the two cells together and allow certain things to pass through. When you look at the side view of it, it kind of looks like a, an orange, like a sliced orange. And that's what it looks like. These are like almost little channels that allow things to go to both sides. Okay? So these are more or less like buttonholes in your shirt allow buttons or pencils to go through it, but not big things. You can't put your thumb through it or something, okay? So we have sewn up shirts, we have this, you know, seams there, we got snaps there, we got this. And this is a close-up of the whole thing, okay? Questions about that? Not too heavy. We could go heavier if you want, but I don't think you want to, not when we have this other stuff to do. But just enough to introduce about these uh, junctions between cells.